Hello everyone. Today, as a software engineer loves Python, I'd like to talk about cross-platform declarative UI framework in the Python world. First, sorry, please let me start by introducing myself briefly. I'm a software engineer at Merukari in Japan. I like several programming languages and I have used several languages both as a hobby and for my jobs. I've been using Python regularly for over 20 years and it's my favorite programming language to use. This is my first Python experience. For hobby, for example, I created a dynamically typed functional programming language called Mochi. For my jobs, for example, I created a document translation. It's a combination of natural language processing, image processing, and machine learning on AWS step functions. Next, I'm going to explain the background of why do I concern about cross-platform declarative UI framework and I come to talk about it here. Next, so background. As you know, an application or service is often made using various programming languages and frameworks. It is rare to implement something in only one language or one large framework. If you are in charge of only one small particular part of a project, you could use a single language and single framework, but in modern software development, you are usually required to use a variety of different languages and frameworks for an entire service or app. I think that a much greater variety is required today than when I was young. I have included a link to a page that introduces the tech stack of the company I'm working currently. As you can see from this page, it is realized using a lot of programming language, frameworks, and tools. Since there are three development targets, iOS, Android, and web app, a lot of things are used to achieve this. To be honest, it is not as fun as it was when I, when I was younger. But this is normal because different programming languages and frameworks have different strengths and weaknesses. But really, I may want to write app services using a list language or frameworks if I can. The reason I think the first reason is switching costs. If everything can be written in one language, it reduces the burden on the brain when switching a language to another language on programming. The second reason is another switching cost. I may not need to acquire knowledge of multiple languages and frameworks. The third reason is hiring cost. Hiring someone may be easier if it's not an obscure language. To avoid incurring these costs, there are two directions to take. Uh, to write the web frontend, a part and backend part in a single language or framework, or to write all UI code in less languages and frameworks. I don't want to write code from scratch for each platform, especially in the case of UI code, which can be mostly the same. I think it's a common desire for other programmers too. So several cross-platform UI frameworks exist now and have existed in the past for that. I just looked up four famous frameworks that came to mind as cross-platform UI frameworks 
using Google Trends. The four frameworks are React Native, Flutter, Compose Multi-Platform, and Qt. This graph shows the trend in the number of hits when a Google search is performed on the names of these four frameworks for the last seven years. The green line shows Qt trend. The trend for Qt has been mostly constant at a high level over the past few years. I personally believe that Qt is the most representative cross-platform UI framework over the last 20 years at the least. If you have never used Qt, I recommend for you to check it out later. The blue line shows React Native number trend, and the red line shows the trend for Flutter. The yellow line shows Compost Multi-Platform's trend. React Native, Flutter, and Compost Multi-Platform have increased dramatically over the past few years. The number of search hits for React Native and Flutter now exceeds Qt's number. React Native trend is now flat, maybe flat, but Flutter's numbers are still rising. And Compost Multi-Platform's number are still very low, but it is increasing now. Flutter and Compose Multi-Platform are gaining momentum. So, I wonder what features they both have in common. I think they are at the following two points. First is that both are made for a single programming language using mainly a single programming language. Flutter is made for Dart using Dart. Compose Multiplatform is made for Kotlin using Kotlin. These are primarily implemented in that language and have API specific to the language. These are not wrappers for using UI frameworks, so I think it's easy to use in that language and seems to be easy to hack or understand in itself. Second is that both offer declarative UI so the UI can be described declaratively in the language. Other than Flutter and Compose Multiplatform, most of the other UI frameworks that have emerged in the recent past claim to offer declarative UI, React Native or React and Switch to UI and etc. What declarative UI? I've done some research, but there doesn't seem to be a clear definition. Of course, Wikipedia doesn't have an entry for it. However, roughly speaking, it seems that the display and state are defined declaratively, the view switches automatically when the state changes. Also, the view can be defined structurally. Non-declarative UI is sometimes called imperative UI. The code shown on the right side is declarative UI pseudocode. This is pseudocode for a simple UI that replaces the displayed text with text to when a button is pressed. The state of this UI is initially the storing text. The view directly represents the structure and the button has a callback function. That sets the state to text to when clicked. This is an example of declarative UI code. On the other hand, here is the pseudo code for using imperative UI to achieve the same UI. The code is designed to sequentially add the elements that make up the UI. The state is not expressed independently from the view, and the callback function when the button is pressed deletes 
a text element and add a new text element sequentially in order to replace the display text. Comparing this is a declarative UI pseudo code. And you will see that the declarative UI code is easier to understand and has a shorter line length. Declarative UI seems to be the better one. So I wonder there are cross-platform declarative UI frameworks in Python world because I simply want or would like to see it especially something isn't a wrapper for non-existing framework. And it may be tough to use for product applications, but I think it could be used for internal tools or for private use. I searched cross-platform UI frameworks, Python packages, and I checked three conditions I would like to see. The three conditions are whether declarative UI is supported, whether it is possible to define views or UI declaratively in Python, and whether it is a wrapper for UI framework developed outside of Python. Only eight libraries have been selected here, based on my knowledge and preferences. Qt for Python, Kiwi, TKinter, WXPython, and Namul. Toga, Flex, Edifies. Each is a great framework, so be sure to check it later for more details on each. But unfortunately for me, nothing seems to satisfy all three conditions I mentioned. Why doesn't it exist? I propose the following four reasons as to why it doesn't exist. First, it was common practice to use native look and feel. This has changed recently as web-based applications have become more common. Second reason is the demand for writing views declaratively has been met by Kiwi language of Kiwi and others. So the motivation to create such an API from scratch was weak in the community and among individuals. Third reason is both Flutter and Jetpack Compose multi-platform use Sukiya. This is an important and essential part of the implementation, but its or non equivalent have only recently become available in Python. Fourth reason is CPU and GPU performance and the libraries to utilize them were lacking in the past. By the way, uh, about Skia and Canvas Kit. Skia is a complete 2D graphic library for drawing text, geometries, and images. It's made by Google, uh, Chrome, Android, Flutter, and Compose Multiplatform use Skia. Canvas Kit is WebAssembly version of Skia. Anyways, the aforementioned reasons may no longer be relevant or exist. So I think it's time to try a cross-platform declarative UI framework for Python. I tried to implement a cross-platform pure Python UI framework called Castella. The name Castella is derived from the suite Castella. Castella is a well-known suite developed in Japan. In recent years, Taiwanese-style Castella has also become popular in Japan. Here, I want to explain three main features of Castella. The first is Castella is pure Python framework. It's not a wrapper for existing framework using other programming language. It's made for Python using Python from scratch, except for dependent window management rendering libraries. To explain a little about the dependencies, 
Castella uses either GLFW or SDL2 and SCIA for desktop apps. For web browsers, Castella uses Canvas Kit, PyScript, and PyOdoid. Also, it's important for Castella that there are nice bindings for each native library in Python. For example, SCIA Python for SCIA. On the back-end code use dependency libraries such as SCIA and GLFW are abstracted in Painter protocol and Frame protocol. Castella's core and each widget module is highly portable because it relies only on the Painter and Frame protocols. So, if you add a backend that implements the common interface for a certain platform, core and each widget module should work correctly without any change. This is the actual definition of the Painter protocol and the Frame protocol. The Painter protocol could not fit on this slide, so only a portion of it is included. As you see, both are very simple. This may be like the event and canvas APIs provided by web browsers. The main feature of Castella that I'd like to explain next, declarative UI. This is the code for a very simple counter application. The heart is the definition of the counter class. Since it's a declarative UI, it defines the state and view. The state is the value of the counter, initial is zero. The view consists of text displaying that count state and buttons to increment and decrement the count state. It is described declaratively as per its structure. And the callback functions for the click event bound to the button only manipulate the count state in this way and does not directly manipulate the UI. When the state is updated, the view is automatically updated. This is a demo. This is another example for declarative UI. This is simple digital clock application. The difference from the previous example is that the clock display is automatically changed when the thread updates the state of the time. One method is the body of the thread, which just updating the state every second. The main feature of Castella that I'd like to explain next cross-platform. The app created with Castella should work on any platform that these pink highlighted dependent libraries support. I have tested Castella and it seems to work on Windows 10, Y11, Mac OS, Linux, and web browsers. From next slides, I'm going to explain a few more details about Castella. Castella has three widgets for UI layout, column, row, and box. Column aligns child elements vertically like this, and the code looks like this. Row aligns child element horizontally like this, and the code is this. Box takes only one child, and if the child size is bigger than the parent box, the parent box 
provides scroll bars automatically. The code is this. Very simple. The next topic is size policy. This is closely related to the layout I just explained. In Castilla, each widget has size policies for width and height. There are three types of policies that can be specified. The first policy is expanding. Setting the expanding policy to a widget's width or height will set the width or height to the maximum size that will fit into the parent widget. The second policy is fixed. Setting the fixed policy to a widget width or height will set the width or height to the specified size. The third policy is content. Setting the content policy to a widget width or height will set the width or height to the size of the content. For example, for text widgets, the size will be the size of the actual text. This is an example of code that children with expanding size policy in a low layout widget and the image of its placement. This code example does not specify any size policy, but each of elements default size policy is basically expanding. In this example, the three child elements share their width equally. The height of each child element is the height of the row. The code on the right is the same as the code on the left but with explicit site policies. But really this means exactly the same things as the code on the left. So the right, right side code equals with left side code. And by specifying flex, you can specify a percentage of the overall size. In this example, the width of the entire row is divided in the ratio 1 to 1. I want to find this 1 to 1. So width is 1 to 1. Of course, you can mix multiple size policies for the children of a single person parent widget. In this example, the first element is displayed at the specified fixed size. This is fixed size. The remaining two child elements share the remaining widths in the 2 1 ratio. To wind this to one. Next, about two types of custom widgets. Castell has built in widgets such as button, text, and widgets for various layouts as seen in the previous examples. In addition, of course, you can define your own widgets. As in the counter application example, so you can combine built-in widgets to create a custom widget. It is defined as a subclass of component or a subclass of stateful component. Component class is a component that doesn't have the state of the component as a whole. Stateful component class is is a component that has state as a component.
This is an example code for counter component. This counter component has count state. This, this is count state. At an instant variable. However, it is bound only to the child text widget. Like this. Not to the state of this component. Therefore, there is no need to even make it an instance variable if the encapsulation of the count state is unnecessary. Here is an example of the counter up written without instance variables. So, no instance variables. It's a way of writing it fine. Here is an example of a numeric list component. This component is a stateful component. This component adds a new text with number. When the add button is clicked, It, ha it has underscore num instance variable as state. It must also be passed to the constructor of the state component class. In this way, the view of the entire num list is updated when the value of the underscore num instance variable is updated. In other words, it like that the entire view method is re-executed on updating the state of component. And Castella has more features, for example, dark mode and hot reloading and restarting and more. Now, just to summarize, let's quickly look at the main point again from this presentation. First, cross-platform declarative UI frameworks seem to be gaining momentum. In declarative UI, view and state are defined declaratively, and the view switches automatically when the state changes. Also, the view can be defined structurally. Third, there are many good cross-platform UI frameworks available in Python. However, there doesn't seem to be a pure Python one that allows you to write declarative UI in Python. Fourth, I tried making Castella. If you like, please try using it to create something. Finally, I hope this presentation has been of some use to you all. Thank you for listening. At the end of the presentation, I'll play a video that runs just a few small examples written in Castella. <laughs>